This is the final of three short videos just giving you an overview of the central dogma of biology. DNA replication, transcription, and translation. Translation is the second half of what we call gene expression. Gene expression is taking a gene, this information, this recipe that's stored in the double-stranded DNA, and ultimately turning it into a functional protein. But there's this transcription step in the middle where we make a messenger RNA, and that messenger RNA is what is going to direct a ribosome to build a particular protein. And what I mean by that is it's going to tell the, the ribosome which amino acids and in what sequence those amino acids should be linked together. And that will ultimately lead to the folding of that protein. So let's take a look at that. <clears throat> Translation in a prokaryote can take place essentially at the same time as transcription. Think about it. Uh, in transcription, you've got an RNA polymerase reading a gene and creating an mRNA transcript. The ribosome can actually jump right onto the beginning of that mRNA transcript while the, the transcript is still being produced. And the ribosome can begin reading the, the three-letter codons along that mRNA telling it which amino acids to put into place. Now that can only happen in a prokaryote because prokaryotes don't have a nucleus to get in the way. In a eukaryote, you remember the mRNA transcript has to go through some modifications first. If you don't remember those modifications, go back to the previous video and think through what has to happen for a eukaryotic transcript to be ready to even be released from the nucleus where it's going to eventually encounter ribosomes. So um, translation takes place um, very quickly and concurrently with transcription in prokaryotes, but it is separated spatially and therefore separated in time with eukaryotes. The other thing that we see real commonly with prokaryotic translation is polyribosomes. Multiple ribosomes all latched on at different places. They all start at the same place at the far left of our transcript and motor along, but after they've motored along a little distance, another one can start at the start and start following it. So in this diagram here, the one, the, the ribosomes at the far right were the first ones to latch on at the far left, and all these others got in line after it. When the ribosome has reached the end of the transcript, it's going to release the polypeptide which will then be allowed to fold into a functional protein. Now, translation is based on three-letter codons, or three nucleotide codons. Every possible combination of three points to an amino acid, or it points to stop. Now, there's only one start codon, AUG, and it also codes for the amino acid methionine. What that means is the vast majority of proteins before any sort of modification of those proteins takes place, start with methionine. Okay, now there's a couple exceptions to that rule, and there's a couple oddball start codons that some species use, but in general, AUG always starts them. And then in following these triplicates, what we say in frame, without skipping any nucleotides and without reusing any nucleotides as the ribosome moves along downstream uh, along the mRNA, as soon as it hits a UAA, a UAG, or a UGA, it will stop. That means let go, and the protein is done, or at least the polypeptide is done, and now it can be modified and folded into its final shape. You see the three stages here, and conceptually they're the same as the three stages of transcription. We've got initiation, where the ribosome, along with an original tRNA, that is carrying methionine and can read the AUG. Of course, it has to base pair with it, and therefore it has to read it backwards. Uh, and the two subunits of the ribosome all clamp down on that start codon. You notice the first three nucleotides of the mRNA are not the start codon. It's some distance downstream to the right. <clears throat> Once that's clamped on, it begins motoring along. We call this elongation, just like we did with transcription, where each new uh, uh, codon is read by a tRNA's anti-codon, and that tRNA delivers the next amino acid 
to the growing polypeptide chain. Finally, it reaches one of these stop codons. And unlike the start codon, which codes for methionine, the stop codons don't code for an amino acid, but a protein will read the stop codon. And if that protein says, hey, we hit a stop codon, it essentially blows up the whole complex, releases the two subunits of the ribosome, releases the tRNAs that are associated, and releases the long chain of amino acids, the polypeptide, which can then be allowed to fold and become a happy, healthy, uh, eventually mature protein that carries out a function. That's all I really want to cover on translation. Like I said, it's an, an overview. If you've studied this stuff in other classes, then you know that um, there's a lot more detail going on, but we don't need to get into that for, for our purposes in this course. As you study this, let me know if you have any questions at all.